right, hello everybody. This is Stuart Jean back at you here from Musicians Institute, Hollywood, California, with Drum Magazine. We're in March 2020. Uh, here's our third installment here of uh, assigning specific sounds to each limb um, to uh, expand on uh, what we did last month on. Uh, you know, the roles of the limbs. Uh, so any techniques I discuss in these videos uh, for March, um, you might want to need to go back to the February lessons to look at, you know, uh, what I'm doing with the feet uh, uh, and what we talked about there. So anyway, what we're going to do this, uh, this lesson here is uh, we're going to look at the disco beat. Uh, this is a great one to tell um, you know, really check your balance and your ability to control your limbs. Obviously, if you're unstable down here, that's going to affect what's going on up here. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of students that one of the first things I ask them when they're applying to the college or, uh, you know, auditioning to the school here is, uh, is have them play that, that uh, a disco beat. And I can see a lot. They may have a, a strong foot when the hi-hat's closed and there's not much going on over there. And the minute I ask for some hi-hat action, the balance gets messed up because, like I mentioned in the uh, last videos, uh, where the left foot can really become an anchor uh, for us. And, you know, we're, we get this built-in tension. You know, muscle memory is great, but muscle memory can also solidify bad habits. Uh, so we have to really be careful uh, in our development stages and when we're working on new things to recognize tension and take everything slow and, you know, make sure uh, that we're, we're doing things right. So we're going to look at the disco beat. So we're going to play like a four on the floor bass drum, real solid, bury the beater, you know, nice and strong. We're going to play a, a rim shot on the snare drum, two and four backbeat. And for the first part of this lesson, we're just going to look at uh, playing closed hi-hat, uh, eighth note with upbeats. Uh, being played, uh, it just accented one, two, three, four. Then we're going to move on to uh, just opening the hi hat ever so slightly. One, two, three, four, one, two, to where you're barely moving your foot, but we're getting a drastically different sound. You want to experiment with how how wide, you know, how how little can you open it, you know? And then we want to move on to a third tier of uh, really open, you know, uh, maybe exaggerating that, but just to get that foot exercising and seeing while you're doing that, what's happening with the kick and the snare, your balance, uh, you know, your right hand on the hi-hat, your hi-hat hand, whatever, if there's any issues, you just want to really do this. It's like a diagnostic on your, on your body. Uh, so you're just going through a test here. Uh, so let's start there and then we'll move on to adding some changes on the snare drum and getting up on the ride and, and using the hi-hat with the foot. But uh, So I have a little track here. We're just going to start out, um, you know, you obviously want to go from the three different sounds here, the tight closed hi-hat, the slightly barely open to the fully open. We just want to kind of run four bars at a time or eight bars at a time, whatever it is, and just cleanly be able to travel through those uh, those three tiers of hi-hat sound. So I'm going to play to a track here and just kind of run that.
the next what we want to do is uh, let's create a four bar pattern and on the notation for you you'll just see the snare drum part because we know what the hi-hat part is doing we know what the bass drum part is doing you have those three hi-hat sounds uh, so we want to create a four bar pattern where we're going to add some uh, syncopated notes some added sixteenths on the snare drum not as ghost notes but as strongly as a backbeat we're used to we get locked in the muscle memory with two and four but can we play some other notes on the uh or the e of a beat uh and not let it affect anything but play them strong play them just as loud uh as a backbeat uh so the same kind of arm motion uh, and let's see if that affects anything in your playing Next thing we could do is add some ghost notes to the snare drum. Uh, we want to be careful with this. This is a pretty, you know, 126. We're moving along pretty good. Um, ghost notes. We don't want them to be sloppy. Uh, obviously, they, you know, we associate ghost notes with grease, putting grease on a groove and making it gritty and all that little magic. But they still have to be uh, played with authority uh, and be placed with care. Uh, we don't want to get too flippant with our ghost note placement or too busy. So uh, I'm just going to play a set pattern here. Pretty typical, typical thing here. Uh, you'll see it, uh, the notation of just the isolated um, uh, ghost notes uh, mixed in with our same syncopated snare drum that we added. So let's go through that and uh, see what we get. Here we go. Okay, and you can see the possibilities there, what you could do. Uh, lastly, uh, we can move this action up here. One, one, two, three, four, one, two. So on the upbeats, okay. Uh, and then to get the left foot involved and check our balance, we'll do this. So basically we're going one, two, three, four. One. Don't put a lot of energy into this. This should just be the last little thing. Don't put a lot of stomping. You know, you have to keep hitting this bass drum hard, but don't let the energy go over here. This has to be controlled and just sort of, even if you miss a few and your, your foot's moving, but it's barely sounding, that's, that's great. And then just, you know, mess with how how wide but don't get that foot off the pedal okay so uh cool so we'll do the whole shebang ghost notes uh maybe i'll just randomize some of the hits on the snare drum there not such a set pattern uh throwing some ghost notes but uh really just thinking about my balance and staying in check so all right here we go Okay, cool, yeah, so, you know, not rocket science, uh, 
But fundamentals, that's the most important thing. Uh, I will always stress that we can always check in. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, we have to do some diagnostic testing on our playing, keep ourselves in check, calibrating our playing, and uh, being honest with, you know, hey, this isn't happening, or I need to work on this, and just, you know, wet sanding, fine tuning uh, your playing to be a polished player in your development. Uh, and you have to admit if there's tension or bad habits, and don't let it get you frustrated. Just take your time, be patient, look at the big picture. So uh, cool, more coming everyone, and thanks for checking these out. Take care.